What's up beautiful people? Welcome back to another sit down video. I have been missing in action. Those of you that's been following me for a while, you all know that I am busy working full time. I work PRN. I have two daughters and I'm also a full time nurse practitioner student who's in her last semester of NP school. So things have been hectic to say the least. I am currently vlogging, but I am vlogging using my phone and I'm using this camera so we can do some sit down chit chat. Now I've been wanting to talk about this topic for some time and I actually spoke on this topic maybe two or three years ago when I first started my TikTok page. Some of you might follow me on TikTok. I think my handle is the Kendra underscore RN, something like that. I spoke about the topic of gaslighting and how nurses get gaslighted on a regular basis, specifically nurses working in the hospitals at the bedside. Now, I can only imagine that gaslighting occurs in other areas of nursing, but I can only speak to the bedside because that is the area that I've worked in since pretty much, ga since pretty much graduating from nursing school. I did spend some time in, ho in, ho in home health. I mean, the gaslighting, I work with this one home health company that attempted to gaslight me, but I had to give them the resignation. The effective immediately, I'm out because they tried it. And I think I'm gonna share that story too. But let's talk about how nurses get gaslighted on a regular basis. And the fact that the gaslighting has been occurring for so long, and nursing schools do not touch on this in their curriculum. As a matter of fact, nursing school rarely touches on the toxicity that occurs within nursing, within the curriculum. New nurses graduate from nursing school and they come into the workplace with all of the intentions to be a very good nurse, not realizing that, girl, they are going to get you. They are gonna have you thinking that, wait a minute, Am I, am I going mad or is it, is, is it me? That's what bedside nursing can do to you sometimes. So let's start off when I finally figured out the problem is not me. Like I am not the problem. Me, Kendra, the nurse, I am not the problem. Problem. The system is rigged and the gaslighting is at an all time high to make me feel like I'm incompetent. So one of the first examples I'm going to use for you, I'm going to tell you about is I was working one time on a busy IMC floor. Like the unit was super busy. The ratio that the nurses were supposed to have on that floor was a three to one. No matter what happened, we always had a four to one ratio. The patients on that unit were super sick. Stuff was always happening. The patients were on monitors. And if you want to think about the demographics of where the hospital is located, oftentimes when the hospital is located in an urban, more city, inner city like setting, your patient population is going to be sicker because one of the things that we don't think about is the surrounding areas and the population in which your patients are coming from. For example, this specific hospital is an inner city hospital and the surrounding areas, there is a lot of nursing homes, a lot of group homes, assisted livings, essentially sending in a lot of sick people into the emergency room. So a lot of times when the patient goes into the emergency room, if they're not sick enough to go into the ICU, they usually put them on a step down unit or an IMC. This IMC, when I tell you these patients were so sick, they technically belonged in the ICU. These patients were super sick. I'm talking about patients that were on drips. We can take care of patients that had A-lines. The only things we, the only kind of patients we were not getting were patients who were on ventilators. And I cannot begin to tell you how many times, how many town hall meetings, how many staff meetings, us as nurses will sit and explain to the management, the director, even the CNO at one point, we were like, this is not working. Like, how am I going to have four patients? Okay, check. I'm going to have four patients. I'm giving a blood transfusion to one. Another one is on a heparin drip. Another one is hypotensive. Another one is hypertensive. They all have pain. Three of them are going to have wounds. Like, it's just all of these things going off. One is going into AFib with RVR. The other one is Brady. Like, it was just, the combination was so ridiculous. And yet, time and time again... As nurses, we were being chastised for 
incomplete documentation. And when I say incomplete documentation, it's not even the head to toe assist assessment, but caregiver rounding. We would get chastised for that. We would get chastised for like not labeling um, lines. It's like, all of the things, not having the whiteboard done. And it's like, do you guys understand what what's going on here on the floor? Do you understand that we are literally fighting for our lives to keep us alive and to keep these patients alive? Like we are literally not even using the bathroom. We're not taking lunch. If we are, we're eating our lunch, standing up at the nurse's station, or we're using the bathroom for the first time, four o'clock in the afternoon, because the unit is so busy. And no matter how many times we complain, the same complaint over and over again, they would just sit there and look at us and tell us things like, well, maybe you just need to be more efficient. Maybe you're not using your time management. Maybe you're not prioritizing. And it's like, what? So I'm supposed to manage all the blame of having a four to one ratio, when in fact the ratio should be a three to one, the fact that these patients are super sick with multiple comorbidities and all of these things are happening, including patients being rapid responses. And at the time, rapid response didn't even exist in that hospital. Patients were straight coding and somehow the responsibilities of not having the whiteboard, not having my IV lines labeled, the bags labeled, that's somehow my fault. Like I'm not able to keep up with the requirements of my job. It's like, no, there is nothing wrong with me. I know how to nurse. I know how to take care of patients. The system is flawed and you guys are trying to make nurses bear unrealistic responsibilities. That's the problem. The second thing I want to talk about when it comes down to the gaslighting of nurses is the time management. First of all, I don't think I said it on here before, but I know for a fact I made TikTok content on it when I first started doing TikToks. Time management is a scam. I think I said it on here and I had some people in the comments trying to like go back and forth with me. You can't go back and forth with me when it comes to how I feel about time management. Time management in nursing is a scam and it needs to be thrown out the window. They need to stop teaching it in the manner in which they teach it in nursing schools because time management is not a real thing. First of all, time management is another way to gaslight nurses. They use time management to make you feel as if you're not competent. You're not keeping up with the tasks. You don't know how to manage your time. You're taking too long to do one thing. When in fact, you have no control on what the heck is happening. First of all, healthcare is fast paced, is ever changing. Something new is always going on, just as with the patients that you're taking care of. They're sick, it's fast paced, their conditions are changing, sometimes for the better, sometimes, <laughs> most of the time for the worse. So how is all of these things happening? Mid sentence when the camera cut out. My camera is like, you need to not worry about time, time management and worry about getting a new SIM card to help with all this data you're trying to store on here. But anyway, yeah, back to what I was saying about time management, right? So it's like they use it as a technique to try to scapegoat you and to make you feel like you're inadequate when in fact you're not inadequate, when in fact the system is completely like rigged and against you, the way that they do the staffing numbers, the acuity of the patients, Time management isn't real. So here's the thing why I say that, because I know there's gonna be people in the, in the audience arguing with me again as to, oh no, you still need to learn time management, how? First of all, number one, do we forget? No one controls time, God alone controls time. Time is the most valuable asset. Once it goes, we can't get it back, right? So tell me how a nurse needs to work on her time management when she has done everything that she needs to do. Her medications are given on time. She's written her notes. She's done her documentation. It's now 5.30 in the evening. She's getting ready to wrap things up to give her last set of six o'clock meds. One of the patients goes into AFib with RVR and then another patient, the colostomy bag bust. She has no tech or there's only one tech to all the other nurses. So now her schedule where she thought she had everything under control has now gone out the window because guess what? She's gonna to have to tend to that patient in RFib with RVR. First of all, she's gonna to have to check on that patient. And this, hopefully you might have a rapid response team in the hospital. If not, you're checking on the patient, you're 
having someone else call the doctor, you already, well, hopefully your patient got good IV access because you, you're already anticipating what's going to happen. And then you're hoping that with this patient going into AFib with RVR, that the patient is asymptomatic and hopefully not symptomatic because that makes all the difference, right? All right, so bam, let's just say it was just an episode of AFib with RVR. You get all the orders, you start the patient on an amio drip, you have to do an amio bolus, depending on your facility and the unit that you're on, a physician has to be present for the amio bolus. And let's just say you get that started, right? 